Okay, so um, sheet formats and their creation, uh, there are a lot of things that are available to us over here in, the, in this drawing resources location. In addition to the sheet formats, um, we can create uh, and modify title blocks, borders, and sketch symbols. I'm going to focus in on some of the sketch symbol stuff uh, at this moment in time. So a sketch symbol is something that we could easily add into a template um, and that would be a recommendation. So all of the things here that are in the sheet formats are specific to this document currently. The fact that I created a new sheet format and I'm about to create a new sketch symbol, those by default reside in this document. And we could uh, open two documents and copy and paste from one to the other. Um, but in many cases, you're going to want to make the modifications here to your templates. And uh, there's a couple ways we can do that. I'll cover in detail later. There's a drawing resource transfer wizard that we could use to get all these drawing resources moved from one document to another or from multiple documents into a common template that would then house the information for us. And we'll cover, again, we'll cover that shortly. If we take a look at, uh, you know, the sketch symbols environment, why would we use a sketch symbol? Uh, what value does it have for us? Well, I might have a, a need here to actually do a, you know, identify center of gravity on an assembly or a sub-assembly. And so some of the things that we might want to do is, um, you know, identify the center of gravity, but then it really is just a hash mark. It doesn't give us the... Uh, much in the way of uh, detailed information about the model itself. So there's the sheet metal bracket. And what you saw me do there was just simply navigate to the, to the drawing. When we have multiple draw, drawing views and they're stacked on top of each other and they're all the dependencies, they tend to nest themselves down in pretty well. So, you know, if, if rather than expand and expand and expand and navigate to the view, I wanted to put a center of gravity uh, identification in one of these views. I'm just simply going to right click on the view and then use find in browser. And that'll just expand the tree and identify the view for me. At that point, the technique that we use to um, capture the center of gravity in a particular view would just to right click on the, the model itself, not the view, but the model in the view, and then choose center of gravity. You see that that puts a mark there that we can dimension to, and it will update as the model geometry changes as well. Uh, the problem is that it's pretty uh, difficult to identify that. So maybe we would like to put a center of gravity identifier there. Um, we don't really have one in Inventor, but I might have one that's uh, been created in AutoCAD. So uh, I'm going to do a couple things here. I'm going to use sketch symbols to create a new center of gravity symbol, importing it from AutoCAD. I'm also going to use uh, sketch symbols to house some information about our uh, some of the standard notes that we might have on a drawing. So I'll go through that process now. I'll just simply right click on the sketch uh, symbol heading. There are no contents in here currently, it's just empty. And then I can define a new symbol. It takes me into the sketching environment. You notice the sketch tabs active here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring in an AutoCAD file that helps identify um, then maybe that sketch symbol that I'm looking for. So I'll come up here and come into our drawing environment to sketch symbols. And there's just a symbol that's been drawn in AutoCAD that I'll use for this particular purpose. So you'll see that it brings up a little wizard that it's going to allow us to identify which information and the, the layers, etc., that are going to be captured here. So I have the, just a view for in the inventor environment here for creating this uh, this particular um, sketch symbol. And I could turn layers off and on. This happened to be created on layer zero, which is pretty common practice. So it would go on the layer that you inserted it in in AutoCAD. I can be selective about some of the um, symbols that I would want. I can use window selections, things like that, uh, to include symbols. Um, I'm just going to choose all. This is all that that's in here. And then I'll just select Next. In this case, now choosing Finish would then uh, build out that symbol. You notice that it's been added into our sketch symbol environment. It's been placed down here at 00 because that's where it was drawn in AutoCAD. And as I finish this creation of the sketch symbol, it'll prompt me for a name. Try to use something that makes sense uh, just simply so it's easily identifiable to someone that might be consuming it. So here I am back in my in 
inventor drawing environment having authored a sketch symbol now for the CG and I can just simply uh, place that in. Uh, the preferred method to do that is this is an annotation object so I go to the annotate tab here and then insert a sketch symbol. You'll notice that it shows up as a sketch symbol there. You'll notice I get a preview of it. I get the ability to create leaders and uh, uh, have static, have symbol clipping and uh, have it be static so it can't be resized. In this case, I'll just choose OK, and then I'll drop it down. You notice if I do additional clicks, it will create a leader object for me. So there's the center of gravity symbol for me. Maybe it's a little bit big for this particular um, model, so I'm going to just shrink it down a little bit. And I could do that in a precise way. I could just simply double click, and I can, you know, say 0.5 scale on it if need be. I can do rotation if need be as well. So that's one way that I can create a sketch symbol uh, and why I might want to create a sketch symbol. Most of the annotation types are available here in Inventor, so you don't really need to do too much. I actually use sketch symbols in a much more ex extensive way to capture uh, drawing notes and annotations as well. So we're going to throw some notes down here in the lower left-hand corner. That could be you know, a laborious task if you don't use sketch symbols. Uh, you might try to include notes in your t on the sheet itself and then Maybe you put a whole bunch of notes on there that's more than you want, and uh, you delete the ones that aren't the notes you want to keep. Um, but in this case, if we had a, diff a grouping of many different kinds of notes that are available to us, and we could place them as a sketch symbol, then we could just pick what we wanted and put it in, and that's kind of the workflow I'm going to use here. So again, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll just uh, edit and create a new sketch symbol, so defining a new symbol here. And then um, I'm going to launch... Uh, got a Word document here that I'll be using for this purpose. And I'll just use a Weld Notes engraving. Um, pretty much anything you want to use, uh, I'll just use engraving notes in this case. And I'll just copy this. We're just going to copy and paste the contents here uh, from this Word document into the sketch symbol that I'm about to create. So here I am creating a new symbol in the sketch environment. I'll go ahead and start the text tool and I'll just draw a rectangle and then paste the information in. I notice the formatting gets preserved there. I'll select OK. And then there's the there's the sketch symbol that I've just created. I might want to do some resizing here. Um, I, I can have it set up to word wrap if need be. Essentially just finish the sketch symbol and I'll just call it engraved notes. So this is the process that you could use to basically save um, all your, your note types as a sketch symbol, which means that now I can just simply, uh, from my list of notes here, uh, insert the appropriate ones. So again, I can go here to the, when I'm working along in the, in the, you know, the, view, the drawing environment, I can go ahead and just use the annotation tool and symbols that are here, and then also include in this case, the engraved notes. Okay, so just placing in the ones that I want. We also have the ability to make modifications to this. So you notice that it came in centered on my cursor. If I wanted to make a change to this, uh, this note, um, I'm just going to go ahead and remove it from the sheet and then modify it. So I can identify the insertion point. So there's the engraved notes. I want to make a little bit of a change to it, so I'll choose the edit function. And then maybe I want that inserted in this, you know, an upper left corner here. So what I can do is I can select that node or that point there, and you notice that it's, it will snap. That's a connection point grip already, but I also want it to be the insertion point grip. So I'll select that, I'll press that button down, and I'll save the sketch symbol and the edits that were made to it. And now when I use that symbol, You see it's coming in attached to my cursor at the uh, location that I defined as the insertion point. And it will also snap into the frame that way. So you can imagine, um, you know, in our sketch symbols, we may have many, many notes. So it makes sense to organize these things. If I do a right click here, I can create a new folder and I can just call that notes, for example. And in this situation, I put, might put the notes, you know, the engraved notes in the notes folder. 
So I've got a CG symbol and I've got notes here, but I could have then a, a significant list of notes that I could choose from to add in. So it was engraved and plated and uh, sheet metal manufacturing process notes could all three be uh, tied together and then using the insertion point they could snap together. Okay, so just some things that you might want to accomplish um, using that. In addition to that, uh, we have the ability to centralize these resources as well. Um, so in sketch symbols, I can create a symbol library that sits in a centralized location. So if I, if I wanted to do this um, in a single drawing and then basically publish these out to a centralized location, they're now available to me from any drawing. If I opened an old drawing that was created some time ago, or if I created a brand new drawing and wanted to leverage these notes without having to worry about copying and pasting from an existing file or going in and editing my template to add these, uh, these sketch symbols to that file, um, then I can really just centralize these things. And I can retain the resource folder structure if I want to. I uh, can create additional libraries if I want to. In this case, this is going to be a centralized location. So I just choose Save. And really what that's doing behind the scenes is it's giving me the ability to get to these symbols from anywhere that's not tied to chronology. Again, I mentioned an old drawing that I might want to add this, these notes to, um, have it start behaving in a new way, or uh, something that, uh, you know, maybe I, I just the template, we're tired of opening up that template and continuing to update it with these notes or whatever sketch symbols, we can just publish that to a centralized location. Which means that if I were to delete this, and then even delete the notes here, the sketch symbol itself. I could still then come in and insert symbol. You'll notice what this is doing. There's the localized ones. There's the local, uh, the folder called notes, and there's the CG symbol that I added that's in this document. But now we've got a library that's centrally located, and I can actually take a look at what's available here. There's that CG, and there's the notes. So here's ones that are centralized. These are localized. So I can create localized notes if I want, or I can reach out and use the centralized version of these notes. Okay, so in this case, I could just insert the sketch symbol this in this way. So breaking with chronology and just really keeping us from having to go back into templates and modify them constantly. 